you got to justify your time, don't you? Okay, Michael. So today we're yep. going to cover basically um, the setup of reports, whether they're on the main menu or action toolbar, and just kind of go through the back end of some of these reports. And after we cover that, then I'm just going to hop in and show you kind of invoice and estimate uh, some simple, you know, changes that can be done um, uh, through uh, crystal reports and then also any additions uh, such as adding uh, UDFs uh, to these reports as well. Mm -hmm. So um, first just going to um, start and as you can see here, this is what we refer to as reports on the main menu. Um, so your financial, your WIP reports, your payable reports, sales reports, uh, uh, production activity reports and so forth here. Um, basically, any um, uh, pull up an order here. Any reports that we see on what we refer to as the action toolbar are kind of your estimates, work orders, invoices, and service tickets, and, for, and so forth. So basically, your two main setups, uh, two main reports there, and then under setup and reporting setup is where we could find these here. So basically your two main folders, reports on main menu and reports on action toolbar. Um, some of the other reports that we see here are uh, basically your, your quick reports, um, which are these reports right here, if you ever use it for the closing process at the uh, end of the day or beginning. And also paycheck reports, if you have the uh, paycheck, uh, I'm sorry, payroll module uh, there as well, and then uh, reports on your uh, main toolbar, which is this right here, that actual, that print option there. Right. And so, Michael, do you ever go into any of these uh, back-end reporting setups and maybe change things around? No. Okay. Haven't done so far. Okay, great. So, basically, under... To look at them, yeah. But, uh... Okay. So, you could actually see basically under order and we'll just take a look at our standard invoice here. It comes up with the report criteria scheme and basically what we see here, um, your options that are displayed here are all set to prompt uh, user. So we're seeing all these settings um, such as display child line item or division because in the back end of things they have option to prompt user. So that's why you're seeing all these here. Now there might be additional uh, report options that you don't see and the reason for that is because they might be set to preset values so there's something already being defined so when we look when we look at uh, invoices per se we're looking under reports on action toolbar and under orders and invoices and there we have your standard invoice now as you can see our um, standard invoice they're using a system report that we have on file here and basically, whenever you go to edit it, you could see that you can't really uh, change that, the file location on your system report that it's using. Um, if you do want to do that, you do want to just go ahead and clone this report, and then you're able to change it to something else that we may have as a system report. Um, basically, system reports just have different ways of viewing the information or displaying the information, um, but primarily all the uh, same, uh, same reports there. Um, just to go briefly go over all what's on the general tab here is basically your menu item and what group it falls under on um, the parent group of uh, forwarders and invoices uh, description that you would want to give it and here is actually your um, security rights so based on whatever security right you might want to assign it you could actually there then go forth and under security setup uh, allow or deny that right um, basically, this comes in handy for maybe financial reports where maybe you set them a security template of accounting and they do have access to all financial reports, but maybe there's one particular report that you don't want them to see. So this right. is kind of handy to where you can set that security right and deny them access to this one report. And then your uh, print option here. We have that set to prompt, so that's why you get your report criteria your screen and you get the option to email, say, print or preview. Uh, but let's say for some reports you just want to quickly print or email or save a preview, that's what these options are here for. Right. So that way that's set, then you just hit print standard invoice or uh, choose that option and it will automatically email, say, preview or print, whatever you have it set to. 
So underneath the option tabs is basically all the options that we see on your uh, uh, report criteria screen. Um, so we'll just kind of start at the top here. So under printer, um, basically this is pulling from your default machine settings that you set. So under setup, yep. machine setup is basically where you would have a set those uh, printer types. So now it's just using system default and that's why we're getting this default uh, uh, type here. Mm -hmm. And this is also sent to prompt user. Um, in this case, we don't have a uh, preset value option here, so it's just set product user. Um, but you got your options here. Um, what takes it a little further, which we don't see here in the report option screen, is that you do have an advanced setting button uh, that you can access from the uh, report criteria screen through the order. Um, basically, what that advanced option is basically some of the printer properties uh, for maybe portrait or landscape, which you could sw switch around. Right. Under email here, um, um, basically we have your um, what we refer to as merge fields for two CC or BC. Um, basically, whenever you get control, these fields are blanked, so they do come like this uh, for each one of them. So we'll go ahead and we'll just blank it out. Um, basically, whenever this field is left blank, what it is doing is pulling the is going uh, emailing to the order contact. So if we look at an order and we go to, I believe, the company tab here, mm -hmm. it will be going to this order contact. So right. no need to set up any merge fields for that because that's automatically what it's doing. Um, but if you do want it to maybe send it to somebody else, uh, maybe their uh, billing contact, which may not be the order contact, simply all we're doing is clicking within that field once and then under merge fields, we could see a number of different merge fields to be used. So under order, you could specify, hey, I want to use the billing contact email address every time right. instead of the order contact. So it could take its place. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with the CC field and BCC. Um, don't know the difference between those. Um, when you carbon copy somebody, the person, the recipient, sees that email address. If you were yeah. to BCC it, then that recipient yeah. doesn't see that particular email address. Uh, same thing with subject here. Now, subject, uh, a lot of customers um, do like the merge field for here, uh, for instance, to display the particular invoice number. So you can do something as simple as just adding a piece of text information here and then following that text by a merge field. So in this case, we would probably want to see their invoice number. So we could do order invoice number. So what the customer sees is the text of invoice, then the actual number of that invoice. Right. Yep. So similar to the body of message. So as we mentioned, there is a number of merge fields to use. So you could have a uh, you know nice message in here, pulling in a person's contact information. I mean, sorry, their contact name. So you could have something like hello and whatever their contact name is. I uh, make it a little personalized. Uh, message when you're resending the invoice. Um, nice. Here is basically the attachment. So you can include the invoice uh, as an attachment, a PDF attachment here, um, or you could include it in the uh, body of the email. Right. And basically any uh, additional files that you may want to attach. Sometimes they'll have um, service agreements or maintenance agreements on there that they want the customer to sign off on and this is where that attachment field comes in handy. Right. Alrighty and then here we have your options right here and actually right here you could actually see that you could default some of these options and just keep it as preset values that way some of your um, co-workers whenever they go choose don't even have the option to select uh, these uh, here, um, that's mm -hmm. really kind of the purpose behind that, and that way they kind of forced to go through the report menu setup, and depending on their security access, some of them might not even have access to it, and that way everybody just has one standard invoice and are not changing the options on it. Um, but as you can see here, there's just a, a number of options, most of them self-explanatory. Um, one that we get all the time is, as I mentioned earlier, um, that it uses the order contact. Um, if you ever want to use the billing contact on an order, there's this option right here that says use customer's accounts payable contact. 
So right. that will then for use the billing contact instead of the order yeah. contact there. And other ones are uh, display uh, tile line item. This one is set to prompt user. Um, you have the options to show the tile line item, but roll up the price into the parent, or you have the right. option to just display the um, tile line item with its price as well. Right. And division option, if you have different uh, divisions there, of course you have, you could select a particular division for that. Mm -hmm. Order of is just uh, prompted, of course, in this situation, we're doing it for a particular invoice, so it's automatically going to pull that order there. And signature block text, if you would want that to uh, appear on a particular invoice. And of course, you would need to have that uh, show signature block as well checked there. Um, so simple, uh, simple ones for invoice, uh, invoice estimate and service ticket, all about the uh, same. Um, this is also where you would go to if your customer report ever came to you. Um, basically, the procedure for that is just taking a simple system report, uh, cloning it, and then selecting on drive. And whenever you hit browse, what it should do is go directly to your reports folder which contain your customer reports. And from there, you're just selecting any um, report that you have there. Right. Yep. And I can do the same on the estimates as well, can't I? Correct. So under reports on action toolbars, um, there we have your estimates and quotes and your standard estimate here. Right. Um, so a little a little different than your um, order options. Yeah. Um, but all the uh, same same uh, sort of uh, principles as far as merge fields and then your your options here. Right. Um, so reports on action toolbar, a um, little simpler as far as the different options go. Um, basically, when we're looking at reports on main menu, this is where customers like to change things a lot. In particular, one thing that we get um, that a lot of customers, including yourself, probably run is your AR uh, summary and detail report. And right. as you may know, um, AR reports are you know just showing the um, um, from basically your current date up until now, and basically the uh, uh, any uh, customers that still owe you money. And here, um, of course, you know, these reports should just show uh, your whip and built orders because usually if anything's uh, marked to sale, then it's, you know, conceivable that you receive money or going to be receiving money. But here we do have the option to uncheck that to where you can see all whip built and sell. So it's pretty much all statuses, see all the reports. Right. Um, one thing we do get from accountants a lot is that they want to run this for a historical period. So as I mentioned that these error reports are running from beginning of time until current time, um, you know, they don't have that option uh, presented to them, um, but you can set, usually this is set as a uh, preset value by default. Right. So you can come in here, set to prompt user, and then that gives them a option to basically set that end date. So you can right. look at maybe uh, two or three months ago uh, and see pretty much, you know, customers that owed you money at that uh, particular time and date. So it's uh, an option that uh, most accountants find in handy. And then also on a bunch of these uh, reports that you see on main menu is basically group by options, different ways to group the report. Um, currently, of course, it's just looking at uh, 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 any orders. Um, not particularly grouped by anything, but let's say, hey, I want to group all these invoices by a particular salesperson. That's basically what that group uh, by option does. So in this okay. case, it basically will show you the salesperson and all the invoices underneath that particular salesperson. Right. Yeah. So this is basically an option, group by option, that you'll see on a lot of your reports, uh, sales reports, um, basically a lot of your reports on the main menu that comes in really handy. Um, so, you know, I always say to customers, you know, customers will prompt us to, you know, for, for some com consulting work in which we're doing custom reports for them. Uh, so always kind of let them know, hey, there's first you want to look at your report menu setup and see what you could do from there uh, underneath those settings. You know, there's a number of options for 
grouped by or showing particular information. Um, if none of those work for you, then we could try to go to see what we could do custom for you. Yeah, because the one I was trying to figure out was um, actually being able to report by actually what, what printer was being used and include that in a report somewhere. So that I, you know, like if I could do a, a report that would say that through this period of time, uh, these were the total sales and then it was a, a dollar breakdown on to whatever printer was allocated for that during that period. Okay, got you. Um, so for that, uh, probably part users by part type or uh, category. Now, in in your case, um, you can you can see right here under uh, part users by part type. Uh, go ahead and select that particular um, equipment or printer. It'll probably be okay. most most useful for one for you there. So. Can you do it by part type? So you'd actually print out. Um, you'd have to do one report at a time. Can you do it as an overall? Is is uh, say for if you've got four printers, uh -huh. uh, will it do a breakdown? Just will it do will it, will it do one report which will give all four printers in that same report rather than having to do printer by printer. Correct. Yep. So basically, this what this um, option right here oh, is. Yep. Yep. So if we unselect that, and then we're uh, particularly just going right. in there and adding um, those printers. Uh -huh. uh, so each each one of those. So I had seen some HPs in there, Sorry. so you could select each one yep. and just multiple printers. Uh, but yeah, these um, these should give you basically a great. Um, um, usage of those particular printers on orders. Uh, will it do it on dollar value or on time? Um, that's um, it will do it on basically on, on both. So estimated. Um, uh, est well, I, I, actually, I, I think it does it just on the estimated uh, usage. So how much uh, money it took, uh, not on right, the yeah. time. That's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, part usage ones. It's it's a great one, um, especially if you also, um, as you may know, in control, um, you know everything is based on your estimated. So if you're using that function of actually posting actual usage, um, mm -hmm. your estimated ver uh, versus actual call summary by order, it's a great uh, idea. Because as you know, Michael, whenever you first were in startup, you basically set up these parts and their cost. And yes. you know, basically, more, more than like just average, you know, uh, guesstimate at that at that time. Whereas, you know, as you're going through production, having your production people maybe post the actual uh, time and usage on these parts, and that estimated versus actual cost summary gives you a better idea of maybe, hey, maybe I need to increase some of these uh, unit uh, costs on some of these parts. Um, right. So that's yep. a great report to use yep. for that. And um, one uh, big thing, as I was kind of mentioning earlier, is customization of uh, reports. There's a number of things we could we could do with customization reports. So go ahead. I'm just going to uh, preview one of our standard invoices here, mm -hmm. and basically just kind of mentioning using the standard invoice because you could use the estimate, work order, or service ticket. Um, same kind of principles of just simple changes you could do. Um, to this report to kind of make your own. Um, so here, uh, usually I don't have a logo here, but uh, this is where kind of your logo is and your yeah. uh, company information and uh, so forth. Um, so in, uh, if we had uh, shipping on this, I am going to a particular shipping location in the middle, we would have that ship to address. Um, on the left side, we just have the build to and order contact there. And then on the right, the created date salesperson and that salesperson's uh, email address here. A um, number of things uh, we could change up. Um, some customers maybe just don't like the layout of this. Um, so something more to your, des uh, you know, something if you have like a design or maybe sometimes you have graphic designers that, hey, I want to go a little outrage. 
basically, you know, you just send up a mock-up over that, and we could tell you, yeah. uh, get it close to um, what you're you're looking for. Um, but you know, sometimes just removing things and rearranging things—that's simple enough. Um, won't take much time to do. Um, basically, you know, anything that you could kind of think of to add or maybe remove from this report, you just throw those ideas at us, and we'll let you know if it can be done or not. Yep. Um, one thing that we get is basically adding um, custom fields to this, which we mm -hmm. can. And basically, you might have heard of our user defined fields, but on a order here under user defined fields is basically where you can create your custom fields. Um, to do that, of course, was just under setup and user defined field setup. Um, but basically, create a number of uh, custom fields that you would like to have here. Um, whether they be text entries or date or a number or a checkbox, um, whatever UDFs you want here. And if you would like to, you know, have those UDFs, basically like maybe a custom message or a field or a selection list that you want to appear, then we could add those UDFs to a report. So right. just taking it yeah. a, a step further and just adding any custom fields you want, which uh, doesn't take, uh, isn't too hard and doesn't take much uh, of training time to do that. And that really is, you know, kind of our, our, our basic breakdown of uh, reports. Um, so um, kind of the 30 minute more, so just, uh, oh, any questions that uh, you have, Michael? Uh, no, that's pretty well right for that. So, yeah, those ones I'm just going to have to go through and, and excuse me, just one second, Brett. Sorry, sorry, Alex. Sure. No problem. Oh, uh, Right, sorry, Prath. Yep. I'm back with you. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> no problem. Um, yep, so um, just kind of op open floor. So if you don't have any questions about reports and uh, setup per se, um, any any other uh, questions or issues I could help you out with today? Uh, just if, if uh, can you actually take control of my machine and have a look at those or see what I'm doing, see what I'm doing with those. Um, usage where we, we start doing the double sided is the only one I'm concerned about. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I could, um, I would have to just get off um, the webinar um, here and so in probably in the next uh, uh, 30 minutes I'll be able to hop off. Of course, if we ended early then I could just uh, yeah. <laughs> hop off as well. <laughs> so, well actually, you could, probably bring it, you could probably bring it up on your screen. So if you bring up a, say, a, um, an estimate which is on a, like, oh, I go on this one, yeah, so, yeah. I'll probably, if you, it's probably better off if, not, if you're going on to a hard substrate. Uh, uh, mounting it to, or? Oh, no, no, sorry, so, say, say you're, you're doing printing direct to core fluid, do you have anything in there that, uh, printing direct to, rather than just on a, a, vinyl? a wide format print? Oh, oh this will work, actually, if you go up to, Okay, so material, so what are we doing? Length of, so. It's like a, a four by three using HP onto vinyl. And we are doing single sided, so it should just use. Oh, maybe that's what you're saying. Instead of using vinyl, probably using an actual um, yeah. sheet. Yeah. So you actually need to get out of that and go to a different product. This is all be sheet fed. Yeah, I was going to say vinyl is in bed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see what we use. Flatbed prints. Yep. 
acrylic sheet. So we got a number of sheets uh, for single sided. So if you change that, double sided. Your number of sheets should stay the same. So in your case, it's going to two. Yeah. I think because we're not using print area only. So that's, for instance, if you uh, did full sheet rather than print area only, it's, it's a full sheet. Okay. Uh, yeah. Back to back. Uh, no, no, Forty-eight change, by sixty-six. Yeah. What, what, what's a eight? What's an eight? Because uh, we work in uh, millimeters. So your height height would be what a uh, be, eight, 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 uh, be like a four, sheet. yeah, it'd be by uh, um, four by uh, four foot by three foot sheet. Which okay, so that's right. That's a full sheet there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Also a full sheet. Well, we could do it basically just let's do this way. It's taking up the whole entire one, and if we were to do double sided, that should still say one sheet. So yeah. Um, yeah. So Michael could be. It's just as simple as within the. Uh, selection list right here, mm -hmm. as you see, double-sided uh, faces need to be one uh, for size. That should be uh, two. Uh, it should be. You want to check that on your end and see if those are still uh, okay. Because I, I did check. I mine was uh, 1.5, and I changed it back to one, and then I, then I wasn't getting any change in the pricing when I started. Let me, I'll get that up now and have a look at it. Uh, my whole layout looks different, so. Oh, okay, the the, the um, you're referring to the, whenever you look at the selection list, it doesn't even, it doesn't kind of even show the columns of faces and sides. That's right. It, it, it shows faces, mounts, uh, sides. This goes to fault. So I guess that's where I've got a problem, isn't it? Sides. Um, that's probably yes, yeah, probably so because they should. Um, for single side and back to back to back should be just one side of course and then double sided should represent the front and back uh back side uh, um i will uh, we're almost almost over uh um what i was gonna say yeah if you if you didn't have any any other questions i could hop off the webinar and just hop into your yep you to take a look at it yep okay great so let's uh, let's do that, um, uh, Michael. Uh, as mentioned at these webinars, um, if you have any um, suggestions, you know, please um, uh, shoot us an email at uh, 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 consulting at serious dot com. Uh, any suggestions at all for any uh, future uh, topics uh, uh, that you yeah. had in mind would be would be great. So, uh, with that being said, you know, uh, thanks for uh, joining today, and I will uh, give you a call right back and hop into your screen and we'll see what's going on with double sided there. Okay, so how would you like to just want to um, do you want to stay talking to me or? Yeah, well, I'll actually okay. give you uh, I'll give you a call uh, a direct call back uh, on okay. the phone. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, which which number do you have for me? I'll... Oh, that's great. Uh, good point. Let me see here.